In this video, I am in Berlin, Germany with my family. We're here for a few days and I've compiled 20 different tips and recommendations for anybody who's coming to Berlin or just wants to know a little bit more about this city. First tip when staying in Berlin is you've got to find a good hotel. And a good hotel in this city means you are near the U-Bahn, that is the German metro system. Berlin is a big spread out city, far more spread out than most big cities in Europe. So just make sure your hotel is near a U-Bahn station. Now we had a plenty nice enough hotel and it was very close to a U-Bahn station. Unfortunately, it was not close to any restaurants or shopping or other amenities. And so we had to jump on the U-Bahn to go out to eat or go anywhere. And that was not ideal. Years ago, I stayed in this marvelous Westin Hotel right in the heart of downtown Berlin. It was near the U-Bahn, it was near all sorts of restaurants, it was near the Brandenburg Gate. If you can, if your budget allows, always stay near the heart of the city. Especially in these bigger European cities, you'll have that much better experience. Speaking of the heart of the city, my next tip is to visit what is really one of the most unique memorials anywhere in the world, and that is the Memorial to the Murdered Jews of Europe. This memorial is, of course, dedicated to the Jews that were killed by the Nazi regime during the Holocaust, and it is located on a huge city block halfway between the Brandenburg Gate and the Potsdamer Platz. interesting thing about this memorial is there's not any specific symbolism. It's designed to represent confusion and there, some people say there's a contrast between the gray and the blue sky above, but there is, you know, usually these type of places have some sort of symbolism inherently built in. These blocks of concrete, they may look like coffins, but that's not what they represent. It's kind of unique and it's supposedly designed to make you feel a little confused because that's what the Holocaust was for those who were in it, was confusing and yet strangely orderly at the same time. It's unique, that's for sure, and it's right in the heart of the city. The next tip, or at least thing to know about Berlin, is that it has a little more grit and a little less charm than many other European cities. Now, this is my opinion, but you walk around Berlin, you'll find some graffiti. You'll find that the architecture is maybe not as charming or inspiring. Remember, this is a city that was completely destroyed after World War II and has been rebuilt since the 1940s. In our case, we were here just after our time in Prague and just before our time in Amsterdam. Now, there's a lot of cool things to see in this city, but it definitely does not have that romantic, historical, European feel that those other places have. Just calling it like I see it. Next tip is to visit the Brandenburg Gate. This is arguably the most famous landmark in all of Berlin. Very popular. The Berlin Wall used to come right through here. This is the very spot where Ronald Reagan gave his famous tear down this wall speech. I would always expect to find crowds here. You can come in the evening time, it's beautiful, they turn on the lights. But one tip is, if you want to find this place all to yourself, come very early in the morning. In the summertime, the sun comes up very early, you can get here 5 or 6 a.m. It's beautiful and you'll have the place to yourself. Let's talk about some good food and dining options in Berlin. I definitely recommend this place. It's called the Market Hall. If you're looking for a breakfast place, maybe even lunch, come here. It's located not terribly far from the Berlin East Side Gallery. It's just across the river a little bit. And you come here, there's so many different vendors, so many different food options. We went here for breakfast one morning and had some amazing French toast. 
We also had some great crepes here. I even tried these unique beef balls that were really quite good. So definitely recommend coming to the market hall for breakfast and maybe even lunch. How is that? Thank you. It's really good. Meanwhile, Berlin is known for currywurst. This is a very popular dish, usually served with fries. Comes with a sauce that's kind of a ketchup and curry mix. Also, there are lots of different sausages and sausages on buns, different variations that you can have, not just anywhere in Berlin, but anywhere in Germany. Now here's a good tip for you. When in Berlin, try some ethnic food. We went to an Indian place that was phenomenal. If you're like me, I like sausage and schnitzel, but I can't handle German cuisine every single night. I like to mix it up a little bit. Berlin is a great city to do that. There's a lot of fantastic Asian food restaurants. This Indian place was phenomenal. And we went to a sushi restaurant one night and had the best sushi that we had anywhere in Europe. It was wonderful. Good. Mm. Let's talk just a little bit more about getting around Berlin. One tip is you may want to try an electric scooter. Now it's true, you can take the Metro, the U-Bahn system, but getting around on these scooters is a lot of fun and it's not too expensive. There are thousands of these scooters all throughout Berlin. They're almost on every corner and there's some great bike lanes too. So a fun option. It's not gonna get you from one end of the city to the other, but definitely you can use this to jump on, go a few kilometers from one landmark to a restaurant to another part of town. So if the weather's good, try an electric scooter. Whether you're on a scooter or not, my next tip is to check out the Berlin Cathedral. This place is surrounded by some beautiful open spaces. You go inside and you definitely get a sense for how big and enormous this cathedral is. And what you want to do is plan to go to the top. And the reason is you get the best views of Berlin. Now, some people say that the famous TV tower might offer the best views. I disagree because I think you want the TV tower in your view and pictures of Berlin. You also get beautiful landscape views of Museum Island and all the surrounding buildings in every direction. Let's talk about Museum Island that I mentioned just a moment ago. Right in the heart of Berlin, just across the way from the cathedral, you have Museum Island that houses five world-class museums. Now, my tip, is if you only have time for one, you wanna see the Pergamon Museum. This houses the ancient Babylon Ishtar Gate that you see here. That blue glaze you see on the brick and stone is really striking. All of this was excavated in the early 1900s and it was reconstructed here in grand fashion. It's really an impressive display to see in person. Once you pass through the Gate of Ishtar, you come through and turn around and there is the market gate of Miletus. This is another excavation, this time from ancient Greece, uh, present day Turkey, but it's an impressive recreation as well. The Pergamon Museum is definitely one you don't want to miss. Even the kids thought this place was impressive. Another tip, don't plan your day around visiting Checkpoint Charlie. It's really not that impressive. Just a photo op, it's a very touristy place. Now there are plenty of souvenir shops around. You can buy yourself a little piece of the Berlin Wall. Overall, I'm just not that impressed with Checkpoint Charlie. I realize the historical significance, but don't plan your day around it. Plan to stop by for a few minutes, get a picture, buy a souvenir, and then move on. There's just not much to do here. One thing to just be aware of when you're in Berlin or in just Germany is the times that things close. There are a few instances where I've found that online on Google, it says that it closes at one time and then you get here and it's already closed. There's a last entry versus a closing time. The family wanted to go to the Reichstag tonight. We get here and guess what? Last entry was about 30 minutes before we arrived. So be aware of that. Make sure to double check what time 
the last entry is, not just what time something closes. Those who know Germany best know that things close early here. In fact, I've been told that Germany has the shortest shopping hours of anywhere in Europe. So let that be a tip to you to just make sure you know when things close. Otherwise, you could miss out. Another tip is to visit the Alexanderplatz, which is what you see here. It's always busy. There's plenty of shopping and dining options. Not necessarily my favorite place in all of Berlin, but this world clock is cool. And it is probably worth seeing while you're here in Berlin. My next tip is to visit the Tiergarten. The Tiergarten is an enormous urban park. It takes up about five square kilometers. It's on the western edge of downtown, and there's a lot here. You're looking now at the Rose Garden, which is just one little section. There's another place that has a Soviet War Memorial. There are a few little lakes, and you've got a lot of other things, including the Berlin Zoo. You also have the Victory Column, which is another famous Berlin landmark. You've got to go under some pedestrian tunnels to get here, but definitely worth seeing. I would definitely spend a little time in the Tiergarten. This video and these tips are not in any specific order. If they were, this next tip would be much earlier in the video. The Kaiser Wilhelm Church is something I'd certainly recommend. If you only have a day or two in Berlin, you're rushing to see all the famous sites, this would definitely be top five on my list. The Kaiser Wilhelm Church was originally built in the 1890s, but then it was mostly destroyed during an Allied bombing raid in 1943. Now they kept it and then in the early 60s, rebuilt the new church and a belfry right next door. Now you walk into the first level, it's kind of a visitor center. They've got some elements that are restored, but really you're here to see the pictures and the posters and the history of what the Kaiser Wilhelm Church and the entire surrounding neighborhood was like before World War II. You'll definitely want to walk next door to the new church. From the outside, it's not much to see in my opinion. I don't necessarily love the industrial modern design, but you go inside and they've got all this blue stained glass in the sanctuary that's impressive. The reason I recommend this place is you get to see firsthand the evidence of destruction and devastation caused by World War II. And then you walk next door into this new church and see the beauty of this place. And those two juxtaposed right next to each other, it's an interesting experience, especially because it doesn't exist much anymore. Most all the evidence of World War II has been cleaned up and rebuilt. And yet here, right in the heart of Berlin, it's on display for everyone to see. Now, if you've got some extra time, I recommend this place, the Berlin Botanical Garden and Botanical Museum. It's located about eight kilometers southwest of the downtown area. So it's on the outskirts of Berlin. It costs about six euros per person to come here, but you could spend a whole afternoon here easy. There's all sorts of different glass houses that you can go through. You can walk through different ecosystems. There's some restaurants out here as well cost about six euros a person and I found it was just kind of refreshing if you will a day off from all the museums and all of the recent history now I will say if you're only in Berlin a day or two probably not going to be on your list there are botanical museums and places you can visit like this in a lot of different cities but this one was really well done a lot to see a lot to do and kind of a refreshing place to visit if you got some extra time It's time now to talk about the Berlin Wall, which for most visitors and tourists to Berlin might be their number one destination. Of course, the Berlin Wall was built, I believe, in 1963, and then it came down in dramatic fashion in 1989 to end the Cold War. 
Now, there are a few places you can see the Berlin Wall, but far and away the best place, and it's no secret, is this place, the East Side Gallery, which is a 1,300 meter long section of the Berlin Wall, which has been turned into an art gallery. And there are some beautiful murals here and famous depictions like what you see here, this socialist fraternal kiss. Now, in the end, the Berlin Wall kind of is what you always imagine it to be. There's no real surprises. I guess except the fact that we surprise the kids by recreating the fraternal kiss. To me, it's still hard to believe as you're looking at the beautiful murals on this wall that this wall was a dividing line between East versus West, and it cut this vibrant city in two as recently as the 1980s. And there you have Berlin, a big capital city, heavy on history, a little light on the charm, but with a whole lot to see and do. If you have any comments, leave them below and I will try to respond and enjoy your visit to Berlin.